You asleep, Johnny? I never knew anyone sleep as well as you. Come to think of it, I haven't had much time to, have I? You are asleep, aren't you, Johnny? Oh, sure, you're asleep all right. Well, sleep then. Oh, God, I got the most terrible headache. That's what comes to thinking when you're not built for it. Sleep. Funny what you think of when you can't sleep. Oh, hell. The aspirin. What about me? Don't I exist? Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm sorry I woke you up. I'm glad you're awake. You know, I don't exist except when you're there. Even like now, when you act fed up and bored with me. Even now, it's better for me. Do you want a cigarette? Yeah, that's what it is. For you, I've sort of gone out of life. To be your mistress, I've become no one. No job, no friends. I'm just a shadow. Waiting for you to make up your mind, Johnny. Well, stay with me. Stay the night. I don't want any money. What do I want money for? I want you, Johnny. Listen to me. I didn't want to have to say this. I wanted you to choose me for me. Well, now you're going to have to tell her. A couple of months. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. It'll work out. You'll see. Everything will work out fine. Stay tonight. This isn't any good, you just sort of coming here in the evenings and going home again. This ought to be your home. Take the break, Johnny. Make it now. Stay with me. It will work. You'll see if it... Johnny. Johnny! Oh, God! <laughs> Wrestling? Yes. Sergeant Wilkes. Well, it's about time. Lucky I wasn't being murdered. You made the call exactly 14 minutes ago, Mr. Wrestling. We've been burgled. Somebody must have put a fist through and opened the door from the inside. Morning. Morning. This is Tender, my letting manager. Now, who found what and what's been touched? Oh, that was me. There's nothing gone there. I opened it just to check. I kept my gloves on, though. I knew you'd want to take fingerprints. They must have left prints. Might have. Any idea what's missing? Yes, my leases. They stole all my leases. I kept them in here. They've taken the whole folder. Leases? They swiped the lot. Is that all they took? That's all. So you can bring in your paraphernalia and start taking those fingerprints. Suppose we get some facts first, sir, now, then, um... Who discovered this? Well, Tender right, found yeah. the window broken, called me, and I called the police. What time was this? Oh, about 8.45. Was the door open? No, locked. I let myself in and called Mr. Reston right away. Hey, now do you might want these leases, Mr. Reston? How should I know? You're the policeman. You're supposed to tell me. Well, I'd say this was an amateur job myself. Where's the entrance to these flats? Round the corner. But why amateur? No professional thief is going to break in just to steal leases. Who did it then? 
Anybody owe you a lot of back rent? Anybody trying to break a lease? They've got a hope. There's five owing back rent. Much? Well, one family owes two months, I think it is. Hey, do you think someone's trying to pull something? I'm only guessing, sir. The people upstairs may have seen or heard something. I can't believe someone would do this just to get out of some rent. Of course not. It's daft. Doesn't know his job, that's his trouble. Any fool would know to take fingerprints. I must say it's a bit odd, just taking the lease. Oh, probably disturbed before they could get anything else. We'll get someone down who really knows what he's doing. Get to the police station. Headquarters, yes. Whoever's in charge. Better report back, Ernie. Right, Sarge. Oh, if the gentleman comes out full of pithy suggestions, don't give him any back, right? Now, Sarge, would I do that? I don't know. Just touch and go with me. Hello, KG. Hello, KG. Message from KG7. Reporting shop breaking at estate agents. 84 Kings Road. KG7, over. KG7, message received. Estate office, 84 Kings Road. M2 KG in standby, over. Hello, KG2. Hello, KG2. Action. Tell Chief Inspector about this. Hello, Teddy. Morning, Mr. Fellows. How are all those plugs behaving? Quietly so far. How's the ankle behaving? There is nothing wrong with my ankle. My father says there's an age when every man should stop kicking a football around. When you tell your father to... Oh, excuse me, sir. Hello, KG. Oh, Sergeant. Sir? Have you seen a gold nugget? No, sir. Well, here's the day's equivalent. Third yes, row, block C, 315 yes, kickoff. Sure. Should be quite a match, sir. Yeah, we'll have the hide off them. <laughs> Mr. Fellows, Superintendent would like to speak to you. Yeah. Well, in spite of everything, Katie, I'll put in a good word for you. Sue's looking for you, Fred. I know. You've probably heard about my ticket. Ah, oh, Fred. Why, sir? Are you just going off or coming on? On, sir, I'm not off till this afternoon. We've had a complaint I'd like you to look into. What sort of a complaint? Somebody had a break in last night. Complains the police aren't doing enough. Well, that's a change. The usual complaint is we're doing too much. Mr. Restlin, a state agent. King Who's Road. in charge? I don't like walking in on another well, office. Well, I can gather Sergeant Wilkes will welcome Uncle's calming influence. Oh, so it's Jim, is it? Now, look, Sir Jim's a first-class lad. He knows what he's doing all right. I'm sure he does, but we just can't ignore this. Yes, of course. But so far, with respect, sir, I managed to keep out of family problems. This is our problem, Fred, and I'm asking you to look into it. Yes, sir. Might have been worse, you know. I could have asked you to miss that football. In which case, I might have had to bring my retirement forward. I don't know what more I could have done. No one around saw or heard anything. This is all that was stolen. I suppose we could circulate a description of those leases, but to whom? Do you know any lease receivers? Well, what's he in this wrestling character? Oh, I don't know. His fingerprint wacky. Well, he's doing all right anyway. Yeah, they're, oh, they're all long-term ones. No, one short one, John Campbell. One month, available 28th of April. That's three days. You know, I, I can't accept this. You put sugar in it? No, I remember. Yeah. Well, if a man wants to run out on a lease, why doesn't he just run? Except if there's no lease, he can't be accused of it. Yes, but he can be nicked for breaking an entry, and that's a crime. I should try and get more details on these short leases. It's your case, my boy. I only be brought in as a mediator. Rest in the state office. It's on the report sheet. I don't know which I hate most, tea without sugar or a fat porch. You don't suppose somebody's using a house for stolen goods or for a hideout? This would be the surest way to draw attention to it. Yeah, unless somebody's got handwriting trouble, the lease would have handwriting on it. Now, if somebody didn't want a specimen of their handwriting around, that'll be your friend. Well, I'd say as mediator, this is the perfect moment to mediate. Now, look, Sergeant, just a minute. Hello, Mr. Restlin? Oh, this is the CID, sir. Yes, sir? Yes, of course. Yes, well, there's a man on his way down to you now. In the meantime, is there anyone with a short-term lease not listed on you? Only John Campbell, yes, we saw that. Uh, well, now, look, sir, suppose we come and pick you up and go and have a look at that house. Well, I don't know there's anything the matter, sir, but if it's... Fine. We'll be there in five minutes. Right. You can take Uncle for a drive. Now, look, Fred, I wouldn't feel at all hurt if you took over this job completely because... Sergeant. I... It's your case and my rest day. And come two o'clock, you'll be doing your own duty as an upstanding and promising member of the police force. Right? Right, sir. And I'll be getting ready to watch the kickoff. There was something funny about it. Temby took an applicant out yesterday afternoon to look over the place, and it was all locked up. It's probably out at work.
Looks as if there's no one home today either. You'll have to use your key, Mr. Wrestling. This is Campbell. Anyone at... Anyone at home? This is Campbell. Well, they don't seem to like fresh air. Doesn't look as if they left for good, does it? Locked. This is Campbell. J.S. doesn't stand for Campbell. They're not in. No car in the garage. Mrs. Campbell, what do you think's happened? Hmm? I don't know, Mr. Wrestling. Probably nothing. But while we're here, we might as well take a look round. Well, why not? I mean, I write showing people over. They can't have done a flip, can they? I mean, not with those cases still there. It shouldn't worry you. They paid the rent in advance, didn't they? That's right. I got the rent. Hey, what about the gaslight and telephone? They've got to have the meters read. If they've lumbered me with the gaslight and telephone, something's been burnt. I suppose if somebody's mixed up some chlorophyll with it. Well, personally, I don't go for this continental cooking. Well, there's Mr. C by the look of it. Not much food around. A jar of coffee, a couple of tins. Must have lived pretty much day by day. I have been lumbered. The meters haven't been checked since they came in. You've got to do something about this. They I'm no good at reading meters. And they've left the furnace out. You feel it, ice cold. Now, where is the furnace, sir? In the garage. Do you know what a month's gaslight and telephone can cost me? You've got to make them pay for this. No, no, they're not coming back yet. You don't have the furnace go out if you're coming back. That's right, sir. What have we got upstairs? Bedroom, bath and spare. I see. I should have thought the quicker you got on your radio and reported this. We haven't really got anything to report yet, have we, sir? Oh, that's the spare. Well, it's because somebody locked it. All right, all right, wait a minute. The drawers are all empty in there. Now tell me they haven't got them. Nothing. They've taken the lot. Except the two suitcases downstairs. Mrs. Campbell, a brunette? I don't know. I never saw her. I never saw him, for that matter. You rented the place to him sight unseen? Tenby rented it to him. Tenby knows him. Oh, I see. What have they been burning? All over the house. What are you doing? What's that? That says a hacksaw, wouldn't you? Yeah, a hacksaw with a handle burned off. And a knife. That's a damn stupid thing to try and burn. I was thinking. I know what you're thinking. The wrestling, you rent this place furnished. Tenby turns it over to the man for a month with everything. Linen, silver, anthracite, All this everything. stuff yours? Yes, yes, of course. This trunk? I don't know about that. But if it isn't, I'm going to keep it. And yeah, the give suitcase and everything in them. This is where chlorophyll's coming from. Here, get me a screwdriver. See if we can open this thing. Right. Look, is this all right? 
I mean, I let you in. I don't want to get into trouble for breaking and entering. Doesn't the law say you have to have a warrant for this sort of thing? The law expects its officers to have imagination and discretion, Mr. Restlin. If they didn't, you'd be nabbed every time you committed a murdering offence, instead of getting a caution. Back it up to the garage. What is it? A severed corpse. Nice people. Ambulance, Jim. Okay, we finished. Check with the doc. It's all right with me. Can we uh, move everything? The sooner we get the pathologist on, the better. Any idea when it happened? Anywhere from three days to a week. Might be longer. She was dead before the attempt to dismember. Any idea what she looked like? Well, it's not easy under the circumstances. Is any surgical skill involved? None whatever. Whoever did it knows nothing about anatomy, less than a butcher. Mm. Excuse me, sir. What's that? It's the ashes from the furnace. Good, they go straight to the forensic lab. So they marked them? Yes, sir. All right, off you go. Can you help us with the cause of death? It's pretty really hard to determine until we find the rest. We're working on that now. Unless it's poison. We'll know that when we get to the hospital. Oh, now, just a minute. Evening, Argus, Inspector. You ought to know better than trap all over that ground like that. It's the body of a girl, isn't it? Just keep your footsteps outside, please. Was she pretty? I wouldn't know. It's a Mrs. Campbell, I'm told. Yeah, that's what I'm told. Now, come on, there's a good fellow. Do you know where we could reach Mr. Campbell? If you find out, you can tell me. Sarge, chase away anybody who hasn't got any business here. Look, do you mind? Does that mean you think he did it? We don't know who's done it. And I'd appreciate if you wouldn't smoke around here. I don't mind fellas bringing in one of your butt heads. It might confuse us. We can cope with this lot, but when the word gets round, I don't know. All right, I'll ask for some more, then. Taking an inventory? Room by room as we go. Anything in there? Doesn't look like it. All off the peg stuff you can buy practically anywhere. Well, the laundry marks may help. Oh, get these off to the labs, will you? Brunette hair, some grains of face powder. They may be able to localise it. Not that. Looks like Brighton will have to play without their cheerleader. I don't see what's so funny about that. I paid over the odds for this. Uncle Fred. As an upstanding member of the police force, wasn't that rather unethical? No more unethical than you calling me Uncle Fred when I'm an inspector on duty. I'm sorry, sir. You're not half as sorry as I am. You want the rest of this up? It's as hard as a rock and no sign of any recent digging. No. You get another patrol? On its way now. Well, when it arrives, get your lunch. Take anybody else you can spare. Right, go. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Detective Inspector Fellows, Brighton Police. Well, what's going on? I'm in all those police and that ambulance. Oh, a little trouble with those what's the names? The Campbells. I'm not surprised. You've met them, of course, Mrs. Uh... Banks, Flora Banks. Only once. That was enough. When was that? A couple of Sundays ago. Mr. Banks and I paid an neighbourly call. It was tea time and she was selling curlers. That sort of woman. How would you describe her? Well, you've seen her. Touching 30. Being generous. Brunette. Wore lipstick, even with curlers, that sort of woman. And the husband? She calls him that. I noticed she didn't wear a wedding ring. But have you seen him? Well, not really. He never gets home till after dark, about eight o'clock. Drives his car straight to the garage. You can get in the house that way. Yes, I know. 
Usually he only stays a couple of hours and he's off again. So you've never really seen him during the day? Only once. Thursday before Good Friday. Morning or afternoon? Afternoon. I happened to be taking the curtains down and I saw a car coming up the road like it was that police car there. What sort of car was it? A grey one. A saloon. Would you know the make? No, but it wasn't a Ford, because that's what we've got. It drew up in front of a grocery van that was delivering there. Did you recognise the van? No. That was the only time I ever saw it delivering there. Well, out gets Mr Campbell, big as life, with a vacuum cleaner in his hand. Can you describe him? I couldn't say much about his face. He was pretty far off. Tall? Sort of. And slender. What kind of clothes? A thorn overcoat and a brown hat. Age? A bit older than she was. You don't know what the man was delivering? Provisions of some sort. She was at the door in her dressing gown again. Didn't seem to care, even one of the tradesmen. What about the tradesman? Had you ever seen him before? If not here in Brighton or locally? I really don't have any contact with delivery men. My husband takes me shopping. Tell me about the van. Was it a big one, a small one? Medium. And you didn't see Mr. Campbell again? Oh, yes, I did. He was in there about 20 minutes. And then, suddenly, he comes out again in his shirt sleeves. So you must have seen the colour of his hair. Sort of dark, I'd say. Well, he gets back into his car and drives it into the garage. He left there, oh, an hour and a half later, because the doors of the garage were closed that long. Oh, look, here comes the ambulance. Now, Thursday before Good Friday was the 19th. Are you quite sure about that date? Absolutely. I remember telling Mr Banks how they got stocked up for Easter. But Mr Campbell never came back for Easter. Oh, yes. He came back as usual that evening. But this time he's taken after we've gone to bed. He was off again in the morning, though. That's the last you saw of either of them? Yes. Mind you, they could have been around a lot when I wasn't looking. I don't spend my time prying, you know. But I'm caretaker of these caravans and I have to keep an eye open. Yes, of course. Well, thanks for your help, Mrs Banks. He's done something terrible, hasn't he? Well, let's say he hasn't been behaving himself very well, eh? Hmm. Now, move along, please. Move along. Stone Park there. If you drive straight along, you can take the first to the left. Go over, go to lunch? Yes, sir. And we're getting the others away in shifts. Call the super, will you? Ask her to put out a special. Which grocery store made the delivery here on April the 19th? April 19th. How are the fingerprints going? All we've got so far is a couple of smudges that aren't any good. We must have wiped the lot with a towel. Door frames, doors, the lot. I'm going back to see wrestling. Give him my love. You better get someone checking the hardware shops. Find where that hacksaw came from. I'm just sending it to the labs. Oh, I see. When in doubt, pass to the labs, eh? Well, is that wrong? No. Great thing, this friend of science. As long as it doesn't make this lazy. <laughs> Are you eating alone? Hello. Mind if I join you? Yes, please. Mr. Reston went home. He was feeling sick. Was it really murder? Well, there was a body, but we don't know yet how she died. No, I don't use a thanks. That's from this week. They tell me to suck one of these days if I want to smoke. Trouble is, when I've had one, I want a cigarette. Haven't been able to eat much myself. Can I get you something? No, thanks, but I am on a diet. Mr. Reston was telling me you handle this deal. I wish I hadn't now, believe me. I expect you want to get back to the office. No, no, you finish your coffee. Mr. Reston blames me for what happened. Gas, light and telephone especially. He's feeling pretty bad about that. But I certainly couldn't see anything wrong with the man. Can you remember anything about his looks and manner? Any peculiarities he might have had? Dates and times are available. Dates are easy. Too. We've been looking them up. Mr. Reston was out for the afternoon with another applicant. Peculiarities? I don't know. He was pretty well dressed. Better than I could afford. Tan overcoat. Plaid scarf. Red plaid, I think. Wearing a hat? No hat. He had dark hair. In his early thirties, I'd say. Stood about two inches shorter than me. About five eleven. Mm. Here we go. Yes. Where did he come from? I mean, what was his last address? Unfortunately, we don't have it. I asked for it, of course. But he said he was in and out of hotels all over the country. I gathered he was a salesman and moved around a lot. But we may get some help from his references. That's all in his application form. What car was he using? He didn't have one. Or if he did, he must have parked it somewhere. I drove him out to the house in mine. Anything there to interest him particularly? We never went in. He seemed satisfied with the outside. In fact, I got the feeling he only drove out because he expected to. Did he mention Mrs. Campbell? Only that he'd need an extra key for his wife. I got the impression they were fed up with hotels and wanted to try housekeeping for a change. 
Don't close it. Ah, I was just off. All finished. Here, do us a favour, will you? Next time, have a go at the big one. This is Mr. Kimball's application form. It isn't very well filled out. I'm afraid it was all done in such a hurry. That's the reference. Gary Hardware Company, Manchester. He wanted to sign the lease right away. He had the cash out as soon as we got back. I can't see any character references. He said anyone at Gary from the chairman down would be glad to vouch for him. Did you check that? Mr. Reston said not to bother, because we looked it up and it was a reputable firm. Well, it looks like Mr. Reston made a mistake. Is this Campbell's writing? No, I'm afraid it's mine. I just asked him a few questions as a matter of form and wrote the answers down myself. Well, I use your phone. Of course. You see, that particular house had been empty since November. And I knew Mr. Wrestling wouldn't want to lose the lead. So I wasn't yes. being too fussy. So we have no samples of Campbell's handwriting? Only his signature on the lease. And that's gone. That's probably why it's gone. Well, this is Fellows. Get off a telex to Manchester. Request information, John Campbell. Dark hair, slim, 5 feet 11, age 30 to 40. Employed Gary Hardware Company, your city. <laughs> Where the truck was sent from. Message received and attending from Church Street. KG3, over. It's on the underneath. Three it's a freight label. Lewis. That makes life a little easier. Our station can't handle that many trunks from Lewis. Well, do you want to check these with the station master? Why, are you retiring or something? I'm still on operation hardware. Checks in that bloody axle. Two new bits of information. Well, we can do with some. The only things they agree on so far is dark hair and an overcoat. The trunk came by train March 31st. That's a uh, Lewis rail charge. Anyone on lead yet? No, they've only just been printed. That's why they're all wet, sir. Yes, and that's not the only thing that's all wet round here. No, oh, no, come off the car. What time have I had? I'm out chasing that hacksaw. So what are you doing here? Well, even a policeman has to go sometimes, you know. Well, go. Don't start humming about in here. You like trains. What's that? That's some more no joy from Manchester. There, John Campbell left for some troopers the day our John Campbell rented the house. Fellows, yes? It's Harris, sir. I'm speaking from Peck's grocery shop on Madeira Drive. This is the place that sent an order to Campbell on Thursday the 19th. The delivery man's still out, but he's expected any minute. Good. You hold him there. I'll be right out. We found the delivery man. He's not back yet, sir. Right. Mr. Peck? Good afternoon. I'm Detective Inspector Fellows. Oh, are you? Well, let me tell you, I don't like this at all. You'll get me a bad name with that stigma part out there. You know, Mr. Peck, it's a funny thing. The people who look on the police as a stigma are usually the first ones to dial 999 on the slightest pretext. I have never dialed 999. Well, let's hope you never have to, eh? Look, Andy's not back yet. You're wasting your Tell time. Me, that Campbell order. How many deliveries did you make to them? Just that one. She called up and we delivered. All this hullabaloo over 13 and 4 pence safety worth of groceries. You people should be stopping some of these robberies instead of wasting your good afternoon. Two packets of crisps. Two packets of crisps. Certainly, sir, and, uh... No, and that's your law. I can have a packet of chocolate raisins, Ted. No, you get them all on my shirt again. It's your own fault anyway. Well, you can't have them. Two have dozen empties to credit, 15 Royal Crescent. Anything else? You're wanted. Are you Andy? That's right, Andy Roach. I'm a police officer. Can't you do it in the office? Do what? Nothing to worry about. Just a few questions. Questions? Do you remember delivering some groceries to a party named Campbell, number one Bungalow Road, just before Easter? Campbell? Hey, that's the Judy Watt got herself done, isn't it? You do remember. Sure, I remember. Oh, I was telling Mr. Peck. I gave the stuff to the creep who killed her. He paid me. He touched my hands. He touched them with the hands he killed her with. You don't know who killed her, Andy. 
Oh. Now, look, suppose you tell me about it. You bet. It's the only time I ever went up there. So I ring the bell, and there's this Judy, see? And she doesn't have the money on her. So up comes this creep, and he says, OK, how much is it? And I said, oh, well, I don't know how much. And he pays me and gives me a tip. Last I see of him, he's carrying the box into the house. Never seen him before or since? Never. But I've got, like, a photographic memory, like. He was in his thirties somewhere. Looks sort of he'd been around, you know. Probably had. Like it was a kind of happy-go-lucky type, dark, smiling, wore a hat and overcoat. What colour? Ah, oh, now you got me. You see, though I've got the photographic memory, it's like in black and white, on account of I'm colourblind. And his car, do you remember that? Ah, that's something else I'm photographic about. Was it a light or a dark colour? Light? You know, when my duty is about me and all What this... make, Andy? Huh? The car. The car. Ah, an A55 1960 saloon. And the near side front wing was dented. And it's been in and out of this town for the best part of a month. He must have bought oil, he must have bought petrol. I want six men out covering all service galleries, started from the town centre and fanning out. Somebody must have seen this car. Yes? Sergeant Wilkes calling from the station. Right. They remember the trunk here and the girl. Arrived on the 12th two from Lewis, April the 2nd. Only passenger off. She had two suitcases left by cab. We're trying to trace the driver now. Looks like we have. I'll call you back Sam later. Sam Lawson, he drove the lady. Hello, Sam. I'll leave you now. I can't help you. I just drove it up to the caravan camp and dropped her. What about the window chat, Sam? Pretty girl in your cabin, you don't even window chat? Yeah, nothing, never said a word, she was married. Look for the ring first, that's my boy. What are you trying to prove, I'm a sex maniac? She said she was married. He was a salesman in Ardwell or something. I don't know, who cares? I care, Sam, that girl's dead. Yeah, I know, I can read. Is it all right if I carry on with my living now? Okay, Sam, manager later. All right. I think we're a little further, Mr. Jackson. Thanks. Anything else I can do? Uh, you could put Lewis for me, Lewis Station. Say I'm on my way if they can be looking it up for me. Right, pleasure. Good afternoon, Detective Sergeant Wilkes, Brighton Police. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Brighton called us. What a terrible business. Not very pleasant. Here we are, March 31st. Charlie? Right. She filled in the label herself. Stuck it on the trunk. Just where you're standing. I don't suppose you know who she was. Mrs. Campbell. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Ah, oh, yes, Charlie. He helped them unload it. Them? That's right, sir. Dawn dark bloke. They bought it in a truck. What sort of truck? Bloody dirty one. Full of cement dust or something. Any name in it? Some name. I was too busy trying to keep it off my uniform. It was all right for him. He was in an overall. But you should have heard my missus. Did the man call her by any name? I called him a few, I can tell you. Think, man, think hard. Did he use a first name at all? Uh, would it be Jew? I'm asking you, Charlie. Because it might have been G. Or even Joe. It wasn't Eden or anything like that. How could it be, starting with J? Well, this is my name. If the dance lifts, perhaps you'll give me a call at Brighton Police Headquarters. Yes, sir. Or was it J? Oh, I see. Well, do you have any luck? Well, only that the trunk was sent from here, sir. It seems to point at J.S. being a local girl. I've already told you we've nobody reported missing. It's quite possible she hasn't been yet. If the girl expected to stay away for three months, she'd have made the necessary excuses to friends or family. What are you going to do now? I'd like to check all the JSs in your phone book. What do you mean, call them up? Yes, sir. And if that doesn't produce something, then I'll take all the S's alphabetically. Good God, there'll be hundreds of them. I shouldn't think so in a town this size. I suppose you want to use our phones. Well, that was the general idea, sir. If you could spare me a couple of men, it would... A couple won't... of men? You Brighton boys are drunk with manpower. A couple of men? That's 10% of my entire force. Quite How would you like to run a town this size on 19 men? I quite understand, sir, but uh, if you'd let me use the phone. All right, make your calls. But be brief. I don't like my lines tied up. No longer than necessary, sir.
this is the foreman. Mr. Shaw doesn't live here. Who's that speaking, please? Oh, I see. The 31st of March. Hang on a minute, would you? Maisie? What? It's the police. Which one? Do we know if any female member of Mr. Shaw's family left town on or around the 31st of March? Family's having you on, mate. No, it's straight up. Hello. Look, I think you'd better ask the boss himself. No, he's not in the book. Hold on. It's Lewis 7450. You're welcome. Well, we've been embarrassed of riches this evening. I mean, one on the phone and one in person. You boys are certainly buzzing tonight. We've been buzzing all day, too. And what can we do you for? And no female relation of mine has left town, I'm sorry to say. We're interested in an A55 grey saloon with a dented front wing. Might have come in any time during the last month. Oh, you picked the most popular color, haven't you, chum? Plenty of A55 greys. I don't know about a dented wing, though. Maisie? Nah. The driver would have dark hair, a man in his middle 30s. He might have worn a brown hat and a fawn overcoat. Nah. And if Maisie doesn't remember a man, he hasn't been here. Oh, hard, bleeding, hard. Might you have done repairs to any similar car? Oh, no, and the mechanics have gone. I couldn't swear to it myself. Still, it'd be in the book. KG14, information received regarding hardware, item two. This brand only stocked by Gardner and Son, Church Street, your area. Please make inquiries there. KG, over. Yes, we got that. KG14, proceeding to Church Street, over. Excuse me, sir, I won't keep you a moment. I'm a police officer. All right. Um, we're just trying to trace the origin of a few items. I understand, sir, that this um, saw is a brand only used stock. Is that right? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So it could only have been purchased here? If it was bought in Brighton, yes. And this knife? Oh, you can buy those anywhere. What, have they been in a fire or something? But it could have been bought here, too. Could have. Look, I should be at the Rotary Club. We've got yes, a dance I understand fire. that, sir, but this is very important. Do you recall having sold a knife and saw like this to anyone in the last four weeks? We sell a whole lot of knives to one kind or another. Right about the saw, how many of those have you sold this month, of that kind? Six, seven, it's a popular make, but then we sell a so lot of knives. So if we go through your sales slips, we could possibly pinpoint the dates, I'm we? afraid we don't make out sales slips. Everything's cash uh, over the counter here. come on, Your cash register turns out slips, doesn't it? Our cash register is a cash draw. We start the day with five pounds of change. In the evening, we add up what we've got and subtract five to get our daily take. In other words, you don't keep books? Oh, we most certainly do. And they show the total amount of money we took on any given day. But they won't show you any individual purchases. I see. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you. Good night, sir. Good night, officer. Wish I could have been more help. You wait all day for a break, and when you get it, it's not worth a row of bloody beans. Oh, it ain't a joke. I see we've had another murder. Thanks, say that again. Five feet in our own ground. That's not a murder, Joe, that's a massacre. Sir? Well, I thought you'd found the card of or something. You sent me to collect information, remember? You ought to have an encyclopedia by now. Seems like I've been through one. I've found 18 pages of Lewis S's. And? Nobody knows anything about the girl. There are two no replies I can try later. What about the trunk? I think we've got a lead. Good boy. Why bait you for sign off? Let them know I've got Miss Sergeant Wilkes, will you? Very good, sir. Go on in, you get. While you're making your report, you can take me for a drive. Drive? Where to? The murder house. I want to give it a going over. It's already been covered. Not by me, it hasn't. You don't trust anybody, do you? I trust you, Jim, but I'm just not the executive type, that's all. I want to see everything myself. What's the matter? You got a date? I'm thinking of becoming a monk. Good evening, sir. Evening, Daniels. Any trouble? No, sir. Bunch of sightseers about an hour ago, but I chased them off. Never could understand people's morbid curiosity. Don't burn your glove, will you? I don't think your truck driver's Campbell. Well, he fit a Campbell's description. But if he's got a truck and she's got a trunk, why send it by train? Brighton's less than 20 minutes' drive. 
Why didn't he bring it right here? Because he didn't want to be seen with her. Well, how would he explain that to the girl? Anyway, I'll get Lewis working on all construction and cement trucks. Even if I am being a klutz. Well, I've got a feeling we're all being klutz. Must be a clue somewhere, staring us right in the face. Well, I'm damned if I can see it. Ah, wondering about this. Does it work? I don't know. Why? Oh, I just wondered why they need another vacuum cleaner. Were there any others around? No, should there be? The caretaker woman saw Campbell arrive with another one. Does Gary Hardware sell vacuum cleaners? Hey, that's a point. Could explain a lot, couldn't it? I mean, the uh, being a John Campbell at Gary's. Talking to the same one, obviously, but I'd bother have known about it. Especially if it worked there. Yes, well, we'll start that one rolling in the morning. Right now, I want to take another look upstairs. Why don't you try your no replies again? If Weston knew this, he'd get an answer. I'd say he's already had one. Make a note on the pad. He can send us a bill. What does your detective ability tell you about this? Do you think this is where he did it? Well, that's right, Dirk. There was no blood. I'd say it'd have to be here. Yeah, it seems so. And I'm pretty ignorant, you see, which saves you saying it. Suppose you wait four or five days before doing anything. Could there be bleeding or would the blood have congealed? I'd pass. McFarlane's the boy for that answer. I'm hoping he's going to give us a lot of answers. Did you get your numbers? Nobody's ever heard of her. It's like chasing a shadow. I'm beginning to believe that she borrowed that luggage and her initials don't have J or S. Or... They must be her suitcases, Jim. Who are you going to borrow luggage from for a month? Yeah, smell those. As a man of the world, what is it? Perfume. I know it's perfume. I'm not that senile. I mean, what kind of perfume? You never give me time to study perfume. I don't know. I say they're both different. They are. Lots of women use more than one perfume. Yes, but how often do they use two bedrooms? This pillow came from the other room. One or two bedrooms, the answer's not going to find Campbell. If we can get enough answers to enough questions, we'll find John Campbell. The kind of answers I'd like are, one, why did he steal that lease? If he hadn't, the body would still be undiscovered. And two, why did he stop halfway through disposing of the body? Did he have cold feet? Either that or a weak stomach. Oh, I see. You're about to work with dust again. Well, I hate doing it, but that's about all he's left us. Get someone on it in the morning. The dust from every room is separate, and you better empty that vacuum cleaner, too. Ask the labs to make it priority. Great thing, forensic science. Look, I don't want to mess up my retirement by kicking a sergeant in the pants. So you better come back to my place, and I'll fry you some cod's row instead. Uh, Fred, I'd like to, but uh, I do have a date. Oh, yes, I forgot you monks get around. At least I had a date. Well, if she hasn't learned how to wait, she's the wrong girl for a copper. And don't waste wrestling's lights. Did you note your phone calls? Not yet. You don't really think the wrestling's going to ask us to pay for two local phone calls, do you? Listen, if I know anything about wrestling, he's just the sort of fellow... Have you used this pad? No. Something's written on the sheet above this one. You will still see the indentations. Anything legible? Not yet. Do you all inventory turn up any iodine in this house? Iodine, yes, in the bathroom, I think. Get it. That's about half full. 
What's this trick? Yeah, you hold that. You better get a handkerchief. It's going to get hot. Now, just hold that over the flame. This was before we had forensic labs. Where did you learn this? Detective novels. It'll probably say two pints of milk, please. As long as it doesn't say Brighton 3, Southampton 5. Jean Sherman, Greenwich. Voila, the missing girl. Well, that's if it leave a name and address. Yes, There's a car coming down the road. We can't stop it. Yes, sir, but it's driving very slow, and I think it's a grey saloon. What? I saw it as it came over the hill. Can I help you, sir? Jumping mackerel. You scared the daylight out of me. My name's Hilders, Evening Argus. I've been assigned to this case. Well, that's a coincidence. I've been assigned to it, too. We finished it there. Your relief should be along any time now. OK, sir. I rather hoped I might be able to look round the house. Hope's a wonderful thing, Mr. Hilders. I don't know what we'd all do without it. Well, can you give me anything? I mean, I know something big's going on. You've got patrol cars racing round town like somebody sold the Chief Constable's golf club. If there's anything new to announce, you'll get it in the morning at the 10 o'clock conference. I see. Well, thanks for the break. You know, the fact that your car's an MG is the biggest break you've had in a long time. Well, whatever that meant, I didn't get it. Smoke? No, thanks, sir. Well, is there anything you can tell me? As a matter of fact, sir, there is. Leaving a car unattended with the engine running is an offence under the Road Traffic Act. So if I were you, sir, I'd either switch off or push off. Yes. Well, I can see this isn't my night. the chief constable his favorite riders are here the villainous looking bunch if i may say so yeah, feel free do you mean to tell me there isn't a single fingerprint in the whole house nothing usable sir anything new on the car well i've got men out covering the registration authorities we're compiling a list of all a55 registered within a 40 mile radius of the house yes your press conference sir all right in a minute we can't even give them the cause of death can we i know that it wasn't poison as the pathologist report there's a statement Death could have been caused by blow on head, strangulation or brain hemorrhage. Impossible to ascertain without missing parts. Which we haven't found. Time of death, 30 hour period between Friday afternoon and Saturday evening. This may still be reduced. Estimated age 30 in the third month of pregnancy. Which is a possible motive. Could be. Do her parents know yet? No, sir. I'm off to Greenwich as soon as you finish with me. Well, we've got the bloodhounds out there. What don't we tell them? The girl's identity, sir. I wouldn't like anyone ringing her parents until I've spoken to them. Well, they can probably have that later. And I wouldn't like to read about the A55. I don't want the murderer spraying that car or running it into the river. In other words, we've nothing new to tell them at all. 
except that she was pregnant. Yes, I'm afraid they'll make a meal of that. All right, fellas. They can come in now. Yes, sir. Good old gentlemen. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Come in, gentlemen. Well, now, let's recap what you've got already. You know who she is, in, sir? I hope to be able to tell you more about that later today. Picture of Campbell's in from Manchester. Well, I didn't think we could be that lucky. Better show it to Ten Beam, Mrs. Banks, and the delivery man. Might as well make it official. I suppose you're off to Greenwich. Yes. That's the only thing I hate about this job. Ringing strange doorbells and bringing bad news. Where's Jim? Gone to Lewis to find that truck. Mm. While I'm gone, you can call Manchester. I want the names of all Gary Hardware representatives who covered this county over the past three months. Like the list of all men who work or have worked there. Okay, go. And see if they sell vacuum cleaners. Are we off? We're off. And do me a favour, will you? Get me to Greenwich without frightening the life out of me. Good morning. Is there a Miss Jean Sherman known here? Yes. Mind if I speak to her parents for a moment? Her father, perhaps? My father's at work. Your mother? She's been dead six years. What do you want? Are you her sister? You're police, aren't you? Is it that obvious? What's happened? I'm afraid I can only discuss that with Mr. Sherman. Well, if it's about me, I feel I have a right to know. You? Yes, I'm Jean Sherman. Well, I'd better introduce myself. I'm Detective Inspector Fellows. I see. You better come in then. Thank you. Now, would you please tell me what this is all about? <laughs> well, maybe you can tell me. What do you know about a man who calls himself John Campbell? Nothing at all. Why? Do you know anybody by that name? No, I don't. Then by what name do you know the man who lives at number one, Bungalow Road, Saltine? I don't know anybody in Saltine. I don't even know where it is. Well, it's five miles outside Brighton. What's all this got to do with me? It's got this to do with you, Miss Sherman. Your name and address were found written down on the phone pad in that house. Well, I'm sure I don't know how it got there. You've never known a man by the name of John Campbell? Never. Tall, dark hair, middle no. 30s? Have you recently, say within the last month, met a man, doesn't matter what his name was, who answers the description I gave you? I keep house for my father. I don't get much chance to meet men. You haven't been out with any men for the past month? I haven't been out with any men for the past year. Let me see. <clears throat> May I ask what you were doing last weekend? I spent Easter with my sister and her husband. And they live? In Brighton. Would you care to write down her name and address for me? Why not? You'll find I was there all right, don't worry. All Saturday and Sunday? I went down Saturday morning and came back Sunday night. And the week before that, you were here, all week. I'm always here. Thank you. You know something, Miss Sherman? I'd take a small bet that any handwriting expert would be willing to swear these two samples were written by the same person. What two samples? What's that other writing? Your name and address. The paper we found in Mr. Campbell's house. Oh, no. Would you like to tell me about it, Miss Sherman? Look, miss, it's a very serious thing to withhold information likely to be of assistance to the police. Sergeant. Oh, now, come on. There's nothing to worry about. This is Sergeant Unwin. 
You just sit back there and relax. Yeah. I don't usually go around letting strange men pick me up. I'm not the type who interests men anyway. But he was different. He was really interested in me. They wanted to tell us the whole thing, just as it happened. He was so nice and, well, cozy. He invited me to have lunch with him and drive out somewhere. Where did you first meet him? On the train. When you went to Brighton? Yes. I, I caught the nine o'clock from Victoria and sat opposite a woman who got out at Croydon. It was the last stop before Brighton. I thought I was going to have the carriage to myself. That's what John got on. What did Mr. Campbell look like? I thought he looked very... well, good-looking. And brown eyes with a sort of twinkle. And suddenly he asked me if he could smoke. It was the first time I realized it was a non-smoker. He was very flattered. Said it was lucky he hadn't got in with some old trout. Instead of an attractive girl like me. Did he have any kind of accent? No. It was just a warm, friendly voice. So you started talking? Mm. He was very easy to talk to. Charming. I never met a man as charming as he was. What about his clothes? Were they good quality? I suppose so. Brown sports jacket and slacks. He looked nice. And where did he take you to lunch? He didn't. I told him I couldn't go. My sister would have lunch ready and everything. He said he just had to see me again. He didn't want our friendship to end suddenly, just like that, when we got to Brighton. Neither did I, really. Because, well, I don't have any boyfriends, and he was this charming, attractive man, and I wouldn't see him again. But you did. He said if he couldn't take me out Saturday, at least we could have a drink Sunday evening before I returned to London. We arranged to meet at 6.30 outside the telephone booth at the end of Platform 7. I waited until 10 to 7, and I was sure he'd forgotten about me. When suddenly I saw him, I was so glad I... Well, it meant something. He took me to some cocktail bar. It seemed very romantic, and I felt gay and sort of free. Well, we talked like we'd known each other all our lives. And then somehow, I don't know how it came about, but he was suggesting I go back to his place. We could have supper by candlelight. He was a very good cook. And he'd put me on the early morning train. I suppose I should be insulted. I don't know, something, but I'm not, not even shocked. In fact, in a way, I'm sort of flattered, John. I mean, someone like you could invite dozens of girls back to your place and they'd all go like a shop. <laughs> even if you couldn't cook. So, I I'm flattered you should ask me, but I don't think so. <laughs> now you're laughing at me. He asked me if I'd had an affair before, and I had to say, I hadn't. I felt very unattractive and could have cried. Then he put his hand on mine, and he said he was glad. Most women of my age had had too many affairs, and those women were never capable of loving. But now, he said, time was fleeting, and if I didn't grasp life while I had a chance, I might regret it for as long as I lived. So he drove you to the house? In a gray car? Gray, green, purple, I don't know. I was too... Oh, nervous, I suppose. While you were in the house, Miss Sherman, you saw all the rooms? Most of them. Not all of them? The one next to the bedroom was locked. The room at the back? No, the front. The back one was his bedroom. I see. Did he say why it was locked? He used it as an office. It was full of papers or something. 
I can imagine what you think of me. I think you've been extremely foolish to go that far with a man you knew nothing about. May we use your phone? Of course. Better break this to the super. Right. I don't think I wasn't full of worries and doubts. I knew if I said no, I'd never see him again. If I said yes, there might be other times. Who knows? He might even fall in love with me. Have you heard from him since? No. Right in 64141. What did you do with your suitcases? 473. What suitcases? Well, I, I presume you took some luggage to Brighton. Yes, of course, one suitcase. I don't know what you mean, what did I do with it? I brought it home. May I see it? Yes. It's the only one I've got. I've had it for years. Inspector Fellow is calling from Grinch. Mr. Super. How about a green trunk? You mean, do I have one? I don't have any trunk. No, sir, this is our one. Just a minute, please. Excuse me. Hello, sir. Hello, I'm afraid we're back where we started. The girl's alive. Yes, sir, I'm there now. Tomorrow morning? Well, they'll have to postpone it then, won't they? Oh, yes, sir, I, I realize that, but we don't know enough for an inquest. Inquest? I inquest on what? Not only no identity, but Sorry. we don't even know the cause of death. Right. I'm going to the yard on my way back. I'll call you from there, sir. Is he dead? No, miss, but we thought you were. What do you mean? It wasn't papers he was keeping in that locked room. It was the dead body of another woman. No. And if you'd no. been too curious, Miss Sherman, there's no doubt I that he would have killed you too. It isn't true. No. Oh, now, come on, it's no. going to be all right. Look, there's nothing... No! Oh, please, now, try and get hold of yourself, Miss Sherman. It's all right. No. Please, now, take it easy. There's nothing to worry about. Please, grab her up. Grab her. In there. Water. It's all right, Miss Sherman. Now, take it easy. Take it easy now. Nothing to worry about. Turn her over. I don't believe you! Now, take it easy. Take it easy. That's better. That's much better. Come on. Let me wipe your face now. I can't stand it. I wish I were dead. No, I shouldn't wish that, miss. You want to consider yourself lucky to be alive. I meant nothing to him. He would have killed me, wouldn't he? Why don't we go and sit in the other room and talk about how you're going to help her, eh? Help you. That's right. Find the number of local police and write it down. You see, we need your help in catching Campbell before he harms anyone else. You don't know where he is? Well, we know very little about him. See, he was gone when we got there. Where she is? Who was she? Well, we don't know. We thought she was you. Now, will you help us? You see, the point is, if he telephones... He wouldn't phone, not with the police looking for him. But he might, Miss Sherman. Judging from the little we do know of him, he very well might. I couldn't talk to him, not even on the phone. He'd know something was wrong the minute I answered. But you'll try. And if he wants to see you, agree to meet him wherever he says. God. You won't have to go there by yourself. Just let the police know and they'll be there too. Now look, that's the local police number. That's Scotland Yard and the Brighton one's mine. Now come on, cheer up. You're going to be all right now? I'll be all right. I don't like leaving it like this, you know. What about the people next door? I'd rather door? be alone. I'm all right now. Quite all right. Well, thank you, Miss Sherman. Don't hesitate to call me. Inspector, I hear they've postponed the inquest. Have they now? Does that mean something new's come up? I was hoping you'd tell me. Well, I might if it gave me a chance, but you got me blocked. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Hilders. We always try and cooperate with the press. Well, how about a little cooperation now? Who's the girl in the case? We don't know. I don't mean the victim. I mean the other girl. What other girl? I've heard rumours. There was another girl in the house, wasn't there? You had two women. Where'd you get that story? 
Ah, oh, you know I can't reveal my sources, Inspector. Now, look, if you've been pumping my men... I've been doing my job. Come on, Mr. Fellows, what about the rest of it? What's her name? There's no story about any girl, and you'd better not try and print one. In that case, maybe you'll let me have a look at the murder house. Take along the cameraman, get a nice picture spread. What's this, blackmail, no, Mr. Hilbert? No, no. Just the one good turn. I'm going to tell you something, my boy. You play along with me, and I'll give you everything I can, news-wise. But if you print anything against my wishes, just the once, I will personally see the only news you get on this case is what you steal from other papers. OK, OK. It's mighty hard to write a story on the handouts you give. Sorry, sir, it's me. Oh, Rick, come in. Well, the Chief's had your inquest put back a week. Well, I heard. Well, I gather you've had quite a morning. Hasn't been my favourite day. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly quiet here. They compiled your list of A55s. You'd be pleased to know that they only sold 20,800 greys in 1960. 12,000 of those were Grampian Grey, 8,800 were Farina Grey. Do you know the difference? I don't even know what a Grampian is. Well, he showed this colour chart to Mrs. Banks. She picked Farina Grey. Now, there are 1,250 Farina Greys registered in this country alone. Do you know how long it's going to take to check all of these people? Not long enough for Campbell to die of old age. The Gorman got your list of ex-Gary employees. Well, one of them, Richard Lester, lives in Lewis. He also owns one of our cars. In Lewis? Yes, but you can relax. He's been cleared. By whom? Well, the Lewis police questioned him. So did Gorman. He's married, four children, works in a shirt factory. And he's been putting in overtime most nights for the past two months. And what about last Thursday afternoon? Yeah, he was supervising the Easter wages. He's also got natural red hair and no dents in his car. Oh, I know. Well, that's how we felt. Now, look, you'd better take these now. And the chief wants to see you before the next press meeting. Yes, well, I don't want Campbell knowing anything about the Sherman girl. But I think we can let them announce our day has come from Lewis. We may get some more help from the public. Do we know she comes from Lewis? No, but it's a fair assumption. And I'm convinced that once we've found out who the girl is, we'll have the man within 24 hours. Can you ever release that quote to the press? Oh, I heard you were up here, Fred. Forensic report. Huh? On what? The ashes from the furnace. Definitely bone and flesh. Well, it's nice to know we're right about something. Is Gorman in? Mm, he was in there. I'd like to put that on my desk. Oh, I'd like to court and face for a check. Didn't Joe and Campbell register in any of their hotels last Friday night? We've got him to Croydon, have we? Well, he boarded a train there last Saturday morning. He might have been there overnight. Gorman, tell me about Richard Lester. There you go. Just looking through your telegram. Richard room. Lester. How old is he? Uh, 37, but he's not our man. Does he fit anything like the description? He's not our man. Is he anything like the description, Sergeant? I'm asking you. Well, he could be, I suppose, but this man... Yes, he has red hair, I know. Anyone who can change his name can change his hair. I want him rechecked. But we've already done that, sir. He was at the factory till 9 or 10 o'clock almost every evening. The foreman even showed me his timesheets. What was he doing the night he wasn't there? Staying at home. Who says so? He does. And you're going to take his word for it? He was at the factory most nights. I want proof that he's not the right man, and if you can't get it, I'll have him brought in for questioning. If necessary, I'll put him on an IDN parade. Is Wilkes back? Yes, sir. Well, on your way out, tell him I want him. And don't sulk, Ed. I know you've double-checked, but this is the nearest to a clue yet, and it ought to be triple-checked. Of course, sir. Oh, by the way, the Gary Hardware Company doesn't sell vacuum cleaners. I double-checked that, too. Yes? Now, I don't expect sympathy, Fred. I need it, too. What happened to you? Nothing, except the Lewis police beginning to hate the sight of me. The truck? We questioned every builder, construction firm, sand quarry and cement works in the town. No one took any truck to any station. I still don't think that man was Campbell. Have you had any lunch? In a sand quarry. Yes, sir. Can you organize a sandwich? Ham, cheese, anything. No butter. You heard about Greenwich? The super held a requiem. Well, there's no need to be defeatist about it. If we get enough no's, there comes a time when there's only yes left. This is where Agatha Christie would have pulled something brilliant out of the bag. Yeah, well, I'm not Agatha Christie, so we'll just have to start again from the beginning. Have a cigarette. Thanks. OK, so we have a Miss or Mrs. J.S. who sends a trunk from Lewis. If we accept the luggage was hers, then she's a Miss. Now, the initials on the trunk were old ones. Those on the suitcases are new, and they're the same. If she was married, they'd be different. Miss J.S. Follows her trunk to a love nest in Salt Dean, gets herself dismembered, and by a freak coincidence is succeeded by another Miss J.S. J.S. is dead, long live J.S. 
coincidence, but not a freak. J.S. are probably the commonest initials there are. So common, we can't even find anybody who knows her. So it simply means the telephone wasn't in the family name. This girl gets around, so she must have access to a phone. That makes it a boarding house. Or she shares the flat with another girl, and the phone's in the other girl's name. Right. Now, why should a single girl live in a town like Lewis without her family? She works there. Yes, in an office or a factory. Maybe a factory. Hey, what's that factory up by the castle? The one that employs all those girls that, that, that make stockings. Nilex? Nilex. Now, what do you bet me she doesn't or didn't work there? I'll go further. Campbell works there too. Will you buy that? No, it's not based on a single fact. You're out in space, Fred. No, everything's out in space, even our ideas. Why should he set up a house at all, not to live with her, but just to visit her in the evenings? Now, don't go naive on it. All right, he could do that where she's living already. Look, Fred, there are hundreds of men setting up places for hundreds of girls all over but the world. But not for one month. It's like the art collector who paid 500 pounds to an Eskimo for a beautiful hunk of ice carving, only when he got it home, it was nothing but a bucket of water. I mean, what's this girl buying? Hello? No, who? Oh, it's Harris. Yes, Harris. I'm in Lewis, sir. I found a garage that services a grey 55 with a bent wing. They think the owner might fit Campbell's description. Yes, his name's Clyde Burchard. He lives at number two Saxon Street and is there right now. Go to the Lewis police and tell them I'm coming over. Ask them to send somebody with you to watch the house, but don't tip the man off and don't touch him unless he tries to leave. <laughs> That's still in there. That's the first floor. Good. Sergeant Wilkes and I will go in. You stay put. Tell them. Right. We're getting quite hot, so it can't be too like this. Now, take it easy. I've been in this game too long to get excited. Mr. Clyde Burchard? That's right. We're police officers. Just like to ask you a few questions. About what? I'd rather ask you inside, if you don't mind. Well, what is it? Have you read anything about a body that was found in Salt Dean yesterday? No. Bungalow Road was the address. It was a woman. She was in a garage, in a trunk. Do you know the place? No, certainly not. What's this got to do with me? Well, we don't know yet, Mr. Burchard. That's why we wanted to ask you some questions. Is that your A55 outside? Yes. What about it? Well, the fellow who lived in the house had an identical car, bent wing and everything. What? Did you rent the house by any chance? No, and anybody who says I did is a liar. What's your occupation, Mr. Burchard? I sell vacuum cleaners. Is that supposed to be illegal or something? Do you mind the sergeant taking a look round while we talk? Yes, I do mind. You've no right to come in but here like this. But you brought us in, Mr. Burchard. I could easily send back for a search warrant. That would mean putting up with us for another hour or so. All right. Look, I've nothing to hide. How long have you lived here, Mr. Burchard? Eighteen months. And how much rent do you pay? Oh, I only sleep here. I don't waste my money on a place to sleep. I suppose a fellow in your work can take off all the time he wants. Well, you can, but you don't make much money doing it. Can you tell me what you did last weekend? I was away. Where? In London. How did you get there? By train. What train? Around six o'clock, the one I usually take. Do you go to London every weekend? Mostly. Why? Well, what do you think I'm going to do? Stay here? You're not answering my question, Mr. Burchard. To have a good time, of course. Did you meet anybody on the train, someone who could back up your story? No. You didn't sit next to a girl, perhaps, and chat it up a little? No. What the hell are you doing? It's quite a harem you've got in here. All right, so I go out with girls. Is that a crime, Are too? you married, Mr. Burchard? No, I'm not married. She's the only one about the right bill. Listen, I don't know anything about any woman in Salt Dean. You want to tell us the names of these girls? No, why should I? 
Look, Birchard, you'd better realize that you're in something of a jam here. The house where we found the dead girl was rented by a man called John Campbell. Mine's Clyde Birchard. Called John Campbell. That wasn't his real name, of course. His real name could have been anything, including Clyde Birchard. I never rented any such house. Have you ever been to prison, Mr. Birchard? Oh, we can find out. It's better you tell us yourself. Once. What for? A girl told me she was 18. Do you cover houses in the Brighton area? I go all over the country. When were you in Saltine last? I haven't covered Saltine. May I see your record book? What record book? Well, if you called, you must have a record. It's in my head. I don't write that stuff down. What are you doing in my desk? Now, look, man, the more you stall, the deeper you're getting. If you think I killed that woman, you're mad. I've never been to Salt Dean. I'll have yourself two vacuum cleaners, then. Uh... All right, Bertrand, get your coat and your shaving things if you want. I'm arresting you. For what? Suspicion of murder. You're not obliged to say anything, but whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. Ride with him in the squad car and warn Harris. Right. I'll let Superintendent Ramsey know. You can't hold me. I haven't done you anything. You want to call your lawyer? I've no objection. Where would I have a lawyer? Well, we'd better find a good one for you. Quick. Come on. All right, I went to Salt Dean. Those places are all alike. Salt Dean, Rotting Dean. I didn't remember. You got me mixed up. But, but I was never in Bungalow Road. I swear I was never in Bungalow Road. Right, off with that. Look, you've got to listen don't to me. Don't worry, we'll listen. Take him in and book him. Hold him ready for night, don't pray. Very good, sir. Wrong. Wrong! I don't want to Go and run up Andy Roach, the delivery man. And Mr. Temby, get him here as soon as you can. All right. I think we've found our pigeon. You're kidding. We're going to stick him on an don't pray. Want to go out and find him? Dark hair, around six foot, medium build. You mean now? Oh, why not? If we're wrong, we don't have to keep the man in jail. If we're right, the sooner we know, the better. Okay. Oh, by the way, your girl called. Said she knew it was a stupid question, but... I might even surprise her and make it tonight. Does this mean you found him? You found the killer? And where's Mr. Tenby? Mr. Wrestler stopped him. Said Tenby could do what he bloody well liked after 5.30, but until then he was running a business. All right, son. On the afternoon of Thursday, 19th of April, you handed some groceries to a man at One Bungalow Road, Salting. Now, I want you to look at the members of an identification parade. And if you see the same person, indicate him to me by touching him. Oh, I'll do that, all right. Photographic memory, that's me. The Tenby arrives, inform the sergeant right away and get him in. Only one? The other one will be about half an hour. It's exciting, isn't it? This is the man. This is him. It's him. That's the man. You're mad. I've never seen him before in my life. Oh, no. You were the creep up of that house. The one with the A-50. Who is that man? You know who I am. Oh, who is he? Right you know who is he? You know who I am. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? Of course I'm sure. How did you find him? Would you be willing to swear to it in court? Any time. Thank you, Mr. Roach. See that he gets transport. Just put me in the box and I'll swear on a stack of Bibles. This way, Mr. Roach. I wouldn't ever forget that man. I've got a photograph of him. Right, Mr. down, Birchard. There's a lawyer on his way. Listen, who is that man? I have a right to know. I don't think you have, but I'll tell you anyway. He's one of the four witnesses who can identify the man called John Campbell. Is he claiming I'm Campbell? He's swearing to it, if you want to know. That's not true. Who is he? Where's he claiming he saw me? Where's he getting the idea I'm Campbell? He delivered groceries to you, Birchard, last Thursday the 19th, to be exact, at number one Bungalow Road. Oh, my God. Do you want another parade when Tenby arrives? Yes, it's a nuisance. No, wait! Wait a minute! I'll tell you, Inspector. I want to talk. I want to tell you everything. And I lied about not keeping a record book. It's in that bag with the rest of my stuff. A complete list of calls and addresses. I want you to look at it. 
It's just that you came at me so fast. Once I'd said I didn't know her, I kept getting in deeper. That's it, the, the diary. Read what it says for Thursday the 19th. You tell me. It says, Joan Campbell, one bungalow road, salt dean. And there's a little star against it, am I right? Don't you see? I was trying to sell the woman a vacuum cleaner. That's how the delivery man saw me there. Well, it's the first house I stop at. She's at the door taking in groceries. But she doesn't have change because she's in her dressing gown. So I offer to pay. Well, this is good business. She invites me in while she gets the money. And later you come out minus a jacket and drive your car into the garage. Is that your usual sales technique? Well, I didn't make a sale. At least, not a vacuum cleaner. Well, that's why there's a star against her name. That means, well, the lady was willing. I count four more stars. Are you telling me those ladies are all so willing? Look, I don't want you to think I make passes at everybody who opens a door. But a man gets so he can tell when he meets a woman if she'd be interested. And I knew Joan Campbell was interested the way she said... That was very kind. How much do I owe you? Let's see now. Thirteen and four and me, madam. That is, of course, without service. Oh, well, I usually get service included. In that case, we'll deduct the hate me. I'll get my purse. Hey, don't tell me you're one of those. Yep, one of those, but not one of those. Don't worry. You wouldn't be mistaken. Must be hard work, your job. Suppose after a while you get used to having doors shut in your face. Sometimes they don't shut and you meet interesting people. May I? Do so many of those. I do all right. Yes, well, I have a cleaner and it works fine. Too bad. I was hoping we might do business. Thirteen and fours. I'll have to owe you the hate me anyway. Well, I can't demand much in kind for a hate me, can I? You're a fresh one, aren't you? I'm a curious one. What about? A girl like you living out here by herself. Who says I'm by myself? Oh, that's good. Because no one could blame you getting pretty lonely in a place like this. Yes, it is lonely. During the day, damn lonely. Do you want a drink? Thanks, but I have a living to earn, since I can't sell you anything. You haven't really tried, have you? Not really. And you'll never know if you don't try, will you? I mean, you've come all this way, you might as well give me the sales talk. How long do I have? A couple of hours. What's the average time for a sale? You don't mind me taking off my coat? And you better put the car away in the garage. Who cares about the car? I care. And so will that nosy old cow in the caravan. You've made your point. And I'll have that drink. I was there until around five o'clock, then I took off again. And that's the truth, I swear it. You made no attempt to see her again? No. I start a name in case I was in the neighborhood. I don't often go back to places. When did you learn she was dead? When you told me, Inspector. I swear that's the first time I heard. One of those pictures of her in your photograph collection? Hell no, those are just pictures I picked up over the years. Mr. Tenby, sir. No, not yet. Sorry, sir. All right, Miller's... never mind, it's done now. Did you wish to see me? That's quite correct. Mr. Bircher and Mr. Tenby. How do you do, sir? Uh, perhaps you'd wait outside for a minute. Yes, of course. All right, all right. Bring him to my office. Am I cleared? Give him his stuff back. Very good, sir. You've never seen him before. No, that's certainly not the man. I suppose there could be a slight resemblance, the shape of the face and the mouth, but it's definitely not the John Campbell I saw. Well, thank you for coming in, Mr. Tenby. We may have to trouble you again. Certainly. If it could be out of office hours, Mr. Restley. Yes, yes, sir. of course. I got the proof. Of what? Richard Lester. I 
talked to his neighbours and they verified that he's home almost every night, including Easter. Do you want time? No. The night Campbell was supposed to be in Croydon, this man was at home. All right, all right, so he's clean. I told you that earlier. Look, there's no point in us both losing our tempers. You can't afford it with me and I can't afford it for myself. What time are you off duty? Three hours ago. All right, go home, Ed. Take your shoes off and have a bottle of beer for me. Those are the best orders I've had yet. All right, Evans. Well, Burchard, looks like there's a good chance you've been telling the truth. But I want a few more answers. Sit down. What sort of a person was this Joan Campbell? I didn't know her very long. No, I'm aware of that. But she did have a character to go with a body. What was she like? I mean, was she easygoing or neurotic? Was she eager or just permissive? You must have noticed something. She was, she was interested. She didn't attack me or anything. What did she talk about? Trivialities. I don't know. We didn't talk much. Tell me about her teeth. Any special caps, fillings or crowns? Well, if there were, they didn't show. She had good teeth. Did she wear any rings or any other jewellery? A wristwatch. What kind? Small, round, golden with a black cord strap. How small? Size of a shilling? Sixpence? Between the two. Nothing else? Nothing. All right. Thanks. A copy of your statement would go to the Lewis police and they'll keep an eye on you. So from now on I shall sell vacuum cleaners and nothing else. Yes, sir. Can I have my record book? No, I'm holding on to this for a while. And you listen to me, Burchard. You've had one conviction for indecency. You get another one and you'll be in real trouble. So that's Mr. Burchard. Well, I'm not approved, but a man like that makes me want to take a bath. All right, let's have it. What else hasn't worked? Nilex Hosiery Company. No JS has left their staff in the last six months. And that goes for six other factories, 12 beauty parlors, 15 chemists and seven hairdressers. All right. So we'll have to start again. It's beginning to look like the perfect murder to me. There's no such thing as a perfect murder, my lad. Somewhere there's always a flaw. There's always a track leading from the kill to the killer. And no matter how well he covers the track, he's going to leave more tracks doing it. We haven't even sniffed at one yet. Well, which means that we're thinking wrong and looking wrong. Supposing the girl doesn't come from Lewis. That girl came from Lewis. If you send a trunk, you're going to send it from the nearest station, aren't you? Yeah, we can't find anyone who knows her. We're not asking the right people. There's a flaw in that mess somewhere. I don't know what or where, but there's got to be. And that reminds me. I want a list from all pawnbrokers of any ladies' watches brought in after April the 19th. There's a description. Look right away and don't tell me you're off duty three hours ago. I never said a word. Well, don't. Now, where's Wilkes? Information room. Well, let's hope he's getting some. He's checking up on dentists. Dentists? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, 29 Edge Hill Drive. Yes, I got that. That's um, six in all. Thank you for your help, sir. So we're trying to identify teeth now, are we? Oh, I suddenly had a brainstorm. Make load of these numbers, Katie, and get me those two first, will you? Hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. I didn't think of teeth, did you? As a matter of fact, I did. I also thought of not having any to identify. No, well, a dentist is the one place where a person will be known if she went. Anyway, I've turned up five JSs and two of them are Jones. They say Joan Stevens is out. Oh, let me have it, will you? Mm -hmm. Hello? Do you know when Miss Stevens will be back? Oh, I see. But she does still live there. Uh huh. Thank you. Right, next. You know, one day I'm going to be proud of you. Now, sir, don't say anything that could be used in evidence against you. The second call, sir. May I speak to Joan Simpson, please? Oh. Did she leave any forwarding address? Yes. Yes, I can send it care of her parents. Fine. Much obliged. Joan Simpson left Lewis at the end of February. They don't know where, but her parents might. In Windsor. Do you want my desk now, or shall I tidy it up first? I'd just like to tidy this up and keep one date before I'm past it. Well, it looks like another drive. Somebody's got to tell these parents what happened to their daughter, if it is their daughter. She's run over some man, that's what she's done, hasn't she? 
Run over some man and got herself into trouble. I'm afraid to. I'm not surprised. She's a no good tramp. That's what I told her. That's what I told you. She's a Whatever good Whatever she's girl. done, she deserves what she's got. Why do you say that, Mr. Simpson? She doesn't live the way we brought her up. Albert. Always playing around with some man. You don't know that. What do you mean, I don't know it? I do know it. What about that droop at the airport? Do you think he bought her things because she's good at typing? That's no this? way to talk about your daughter, especially to strangers. Joan's a good girl. She always lived with us. She was nice to have around. Never an unkind word, oh, never I a say so. Well, you did it, Albert. Always hitting at her because she wanted a good time. Well, what's being young for except to have a good time? Well, she didn't have to go sleeping it around. That's not the way a decent girl should behave. I told her. I warned her she'd have to pay the price. What kind of trouble is she in? We think she's been killed. That can't be. We found a body which has tentatively been identified as Joan Simpson, who was living in Lewis. We've been told that you're her parents. Maybe. Jody. Is there any chance of a mistake? Well, until you and your husband identify. Well, no, I, I'm afraid there isn't much question. You said, did you mean someone killed her? We believe so. Did you catch him? No, ma'am, we're trying to. I was hoping that you can help us. Yes, of course we'll help. Please excuse my husband. You see, he, he really loved her very much. Yes, I never doubted that. Perhaps you'd rather I came back later. No, I, I don't mind talking about her. I, I'd like to talk about her. Where was she working before she went to Lewis? Uh, at the airport. She was there four years. And the man your husband mentioned? Oh, Mr. Hammond. Yes, yes, she worked for him. My husband thinks she... She wasn't a nice girl with Mr. Hammond, but I don't think that's true. Did you ever meet him, Mrs. Simpson? Oh, yes, he used to call for her. He always seemed a gentleman. I think my husband was jealous because Mr. Hammond did such nice things for Joan. And what about other men friends? Oh, yes, she always had plenty of dates. Until Mr. Hammond, then they stopped calling her. I think she discouraged them. I, I think maybe she was hoping to marry Mr. Hammond. But she didn't. One day, he suddenly left the company. Joan was very upset. Especially when my husband kept saying how he told her so. So she followed him to Lewis? I, I don't know where she went. She came home one night and said she'd got another job and was moving out. She never wrote to you? Well, you'll be very helpful, Mrs. Simpson. Thank you. Well, I'll be getting along, sir. There'll be a car here in the morning. It's just a formality of identification. I understand. I'll see myself out. John Hammond fired, Mr. Blake. We've been getting complaints. He couldn't keep his hands off some of the staff. One of them being Joan Simpson? Not one of the complaints. They seem to get on fine. How long was she as secretary? Oh, about six months, I think. His regular girl left and he asked us to upgrade Joan from the typing pool. Would you still have his file? Certainly, but you won't find much in it. Bring me the 1960 personnel file, please. 1960. Thank Any you. Any idea what happened to him after he left? Not a clue. I believe one of the freight boys met him about a year ago. He said he was selling cars in the Midlands or something. Do you know if he continued to see the girl? I'd be very surprised. He was the type to be staking out new planes rather than hanging on to old ones. Come in. 1960 personnel. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, miss. Does the name John Hammond mean anything to you? Do you know him? Know him? I've still got the scars. Oh, sorry, Mr. Blake. I'm afraid I'm going to have to question a lot of your staff, sir. Do you really think Hammond did this terrible thing? I'm willing to bet my faith I did on it. John Hammond is John Campbell, and furthermore, he lives in this area. Based on what facts? Well, sir, if we accept Campbell is Hammond, the jigsaw begins to make a picture. We now see why Joan Simpson came to Lewis. She was following him. We're even getting a motive. 
she wanted to marry him. Maybe he promised to marry her. So she pesters him, he even threatens to tell his wife. Have we established a wife? Well, if he isn't married, why rent a house? She could go to his place. I believe he took that house to keep her quiet while he planned what to do with her. So, what's the next move? Well, with your permission, sir, I'd like the Yard to send down an identikit immediately. I want to build up a composite picture of this man and issue it to the press as soon as possible. All right. Will you arrange that? Yes, of course. And I'd like them to put Gene Sherman on the 11 o'clock train, and if they can get Mr. Blake at the airport, let's have him too. They should be able to make it. I take it you're also bringing in the branch woman and Tenby? Yes, sir. Between the four of them, we should build up a pretty good picture of our man. And there's even a chance we'll recognize it. Yes, I have an idea. But it's a wild one, sir, and if I'm wrong, I'll be the laughing stock of the town. Well, let's hope you won't be. Meantime, is there anything new we can give to the press? Best we can say is that the wheels are grinding, sir. Yes, the trouble is that when the wheels aren't making any noise, people think we're sitting on our hands. I know. All right, fellas. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, oh. get a cart out of the caravan site. I want to make sure Mrs. Banks is here without fail at 12, and that goes for Mr. Tenby. Any trouble with wrestling, refer him to me. OK. Papers are spread the trunk label and initials. KGA, tell me immediately. Right. We've already had six. Yes, he's called to set it alive and kicking. How far can you drive in 25 minutes? What? In average traffic. Oh. I'd say about eight or nine miles. Why? Because I believe that John Campbell Hammond lives within 20 to 25 minutes of the murder house. Well, since the girl's parents don't know where he is and the airport put him in the middle and selling cars... I don't care if he sold boats at Scarpa Flow. Right this moment, I'll lay odds he lives somewhere in that circle. Calm down, Fred. You're up in the stratosphere again. Do you accept he was at that house around eight every evening? Yes, we have to. So we accept he can't go during the day because he's got a regular job. Now, he gets through at, what, say, 5.30 to 6. First, he goes home to have dinner with his wife. Nice understanding wife. Let's him out every night. He only rented the house for a month. Now, he tells his wife he's trying to earn some extra money, maybe a spare-time salesman. And with Easter coming up, he's going to be working in the evenings for a month. Still doesn't put him in that circle. It will if you shut up a minute. Now, he dines with his wife at, what, 7? Seven? 7. Give them 45 minutes to eat. That allows him about 15 minutes to get to Salt Dean. Allow ten minutes either side, and John Campbell Hammond has to live within 25 minutes of the murder house. D.I.'s office. Who? Mr. Bunnell. Oh, yes, in here. Bring him through, please. Who's Mr. Bunnell? Another suspect? Oh, I'm past the stratosphere now. I'm practically in orbit. That's the client Tenby took to the house the day before the burglary. They couldn't get in, remember? Yes, I remember. Mr. Bunnell, sir. Oh, come in, Mr. Bunnell. Sit down. This is Sergeant Wilkes. Oh, how do you do, sir? And how do you do? Do you know, I've never been in a detective's office before. It's rather exciting, isn't it? Mr. Bunnell, you went out to look at the house on Tuesday the 24th. Yeah, absolutely correct, sir. I just finished playing with the boys. I'm a schoolmaster, of course. You drove out to the house? Yes, absolutely correct. Mr. Um, Tenby, isn't it? And I, yes. We took my car and then we couldn't get in. The house, of course. We rang the bells. Several times that the place seemed quite deserted. Mr. Um, uh, you know, hadn't got the keys with him, but he suggested if we came back the next day, there was sure to be someone there. Of course, the very next day, I found out that someone had perished there. How many people knew you were going to look at the house again? Well, my wife, of course, and uh, possibly Mr. Motts. Uh, that's our man. And how old is Mr. Know. Motts? Oh, old Motts? Oh, he's well into his 60s, yes. A real Mr. Chips. <laughs> now, you're quite sure nobody else could have known. Oh, absolutely sure, yes. <laughs> well, I'm much obliged to you, Mr. Bunnell. Uh, is that all? But you've been a great help. Have I? I didn't think I'd been a very good witness. Oh, but you've been an excellent one. Oh, have I? <laughs> well, I'm so glad. Well, it's Thank something you. to tell the boys anyway, isn't it? I thought I'd give you a good ring there. Well, come on. I work here too. I've been adding up my theories. Someone didn't want us to identify his writing on that lease. That I understand. But why did he stop destroying the body on Tuesday night? No, I thought we agreed it was fear of discovery. Not fear, Jim. Expectation. He knew something was going to happen on Wednesday. But it wasn't necessarily Mr. Bunnell. I can't sell you anything, can I? The only thing that will sell me is when somebody points and says that man is John Campbell. I want Sergeant Unwin to meet the midday train from London and escort Miss Jean Sherman here. Yes, he knows her. Jean Sherman? A bit more of my stratosphere stuff. It probably won't pay off, but by the law of averages, if you keep trying long enough, something's bound to happen. Will you sit over there, please? The others are just coming in. Is it Miss Sherman, Mr. Blake? Yes. And Sergeant Nielsen, the identikit operator. Between you all, we're going to try and build up a composite likeness of the man we're looking for. 
Ah, this is Banks. Come on, sit over here, will you? Come on, Mr. Nex. Oh, you can tell us about it later. Come on, take it away. Mr. Nex, you've got to listen to me. It happened in the kitchen. When I told her I wasn't seeing her again, that even if she went to my wife, I wasn't going on with it, there was a scene. She became hysterical and grabbed a knife and came at me. I tried to get out of the way and fell. She was rushing at me so hard, she tripped over me and fell against the sink. I thought she was just unconscious, but when I couldn't revive her, I realized she was dead. That's the truth. You've got to believe me. I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Tenby. I think you killed Joan Simpson because she was threatening you, because she was pregnant. It's not true. Because it was a very carefully planned murder. No. Even to the purchase of a knife and hacksaw. Yes, we traced them to Gardner's hardware shop. All right, I admit that. But it was after she died. I bought them after. When? I bought them, when was it? Monday, yes, that's right, Monday, after I put Jean Sherman on the train. You bought them before she was killed. I swear I didn't. The shop's near the station. That's why I bought them there. You was on the body. I was in a blind panic. I realized what it would look like if I called the police. They'd think I was guilty no matter what I said. Have you ever been to prison, Tenby? Once. What for? I embezzled 50 pounds. It was a long time ago. Under what name? Campbell, Hammond, or Tenby? Tenby, it's my real one. Were you married then? Yes, my wife knew everything. I changed my name and worked as a salesman for a Croydon cosmetic firm. Were you thrown out of that job too? No. I got a better one at the airport. That's where I met Joan. How soon did you start planning to kill her? I didn't kill her. It was an accident. Well, tell us about it. What you did, what she did. But I've already told you. All right, well, let's have it again. Tell Sergeant Wilkes. She started making demands about divorce and marriage. I, I thought it was safest to go on seeing her for a while. So you drove her tram to the station to make sure she brought her? I didn't drive anything. Who did that? Her roommate's fiance. He runs a chicken farm or something. His name? I don't know. Her roommate was Ruth somebody. We never met. So you rented the house and dreamt up another name? <laughs> I told my wife I was back on cosmetics. And when was the big blow-up? Friday night. Joan wanted me to stay the weekend as if we were married. I said no, and she started getting hysterical. So you knew you'd have to kill her? Don't keep saying that! She fell! Against the sink! And off you went to Croydon. I had to get away. Where I could think. Where should you do this thinking? In a flat. What? Flat? I don't know the address. Whose flat? I don't know her name! And the next morning you picked up Jean Sherman on the train. It sounds terrible, put that way. How do you like me to put it? Just wanted to be with a woman. It's always been that way. With me, when I'm in trouble, I, I turn to a woman. Why didn't you finish the job? I was terrified Reston would take that school teacher back with the key. So you bundled everything into a trunk and staged a burglary? I knew the first thing they would do was check the lease. And it was in my handwriting. I didn't kill her! She died accidentally! It was an accident. Would you like a cup of tea or coffee, Mr. Tenby? Tea, please. Right, we'll have a cup of tea and then we'll go over it again. I can't keep telling you! Why not? Unless you're afraid of forgetting something. She rushed at me with a knife. She tripped and struck her head. What sort of knife? A long carving knife. The one you bought at Gardner's. I didn't buy that till Monday! Well, you have another thing. We'll go over it again later. Oh, the bottom man's well faced it. He's got us over a barrel. I don't care how often he denies it, he killed her. I'll stake my life on that. He doesn't have to prove he didn't murder her. We have to prove he did. We don't have a chance. Of course we've got a chance. Show me where. How did she die? Could have been an accident, as he says. He bought the knife and hacksaw while he was planning to murder her. That's our version, but we can't prove it. Could have been Monday, as he says. 
We've had all this trouble to catch man, and we can't touch him just because some bloody hardware shop doesn't keep records. All right, snap out. Hey, come on, I'll buy you a drink. No one will blame you, Fred. You've done a hell of a job. It's just the breaks of the game. That's supposed to make me feel better. Hey, I hear you've got him. Well, leave us alone, is a good fellow. What have you on, haven't you? Oh, come on, Mr. Fellas, you owe me a break. I never mentioned the Sherman girl, did I? I'll get the chief to give you a medal. I think I'll put him for the show column. I wouldn't have his job either. Hey, Fred. We're a bit slow on the uptake, aren't we? Monday was a public holiday. The shops were closed. Of course, you know what you've just done, don't you? What? Doctors have had of a drink. <laughs> <laughs>